Access more. Well, welcome back. Here we are. Here we are, and it's November. Welcome to the podcast. It's November. Yeah. And it's cold. Look at us in sweaters. It's cold for us. Cold for us. Very you cold. You might be listening, and you might be sweating. We're in a cold snap. The trees weren't ready for it. So literally, there's like snapping because branches are breaking. There was a, a lack of winterization in the branches. The sap hadn't gotten pulled down to the roots of the trees, apparently, which is what they do to get ready for winter. It had been so warm, the trees had just all the sap flown around. Well, sap makes the, the, the branches limber. When they have no sap, they get rigid. So wow. from what I understand, they're not ready to hold snow. So every tree in the world either broke or looks like a weeping willow right now. In the world? In, in our month, world. In our world. There was transformers busting. <laughs> Bless you. But it was really nice. You know, when we got home and there was no power, you lit a couple of candles. We just, the kids started building a snowman. We started reading there. I was eating chips and salsa to my shame. Because you opened the fridge when you're not supposed to open the fridge. I did open the fridge. That's like the number <laughs> one rule of it. a crisis. You Don't said it was fridge. worth it. Because then you were able to eat chips and salsa. I just really wanted chips and salsa, and I counted the cost. I was like, I know where the salsa is at. I'm just going to do it quickly. Oh, I should have opened that secret door. Oh, I don't know if you'd be would have been able to get. You don't think the salsa was there? Still would have. Our fridge that we got because our old fridge we had the same fridge from when we got married, and it Mm -hmm. broke since we moved into the house. Okay, well, it was like eleven years years ago. It broke. And we got a new fridge and it has like a door, inner door. You push the handle and like a little Mm -hmm. inner door opens to get condiments. Mm -hmm. And I was like, I'm going to get that salsa. And I didn't even open the inner door. But either door would have caused the cold air to come out. Why, Jenny, do we not open the fridge if we lose power? Because the air energy. The air energy? (laughs) Did you just invent a concept? (laughs) You don't want to get the cold out of there. It's like a cooler. Yeah. (laughs) You lose it all. And I did. But then the power came back on and it was fine. Here we are. And then the kids stayed playing outside until it was dark. It was wonderful. Clover built an enormous snowman. Mm -hmm. It was very snowmanable snow. Snowmanable. It was moist snow. Yeah, because it just rolls easy. Perfect. Mm -hmm. Rolls off the tongue. Mm -hmm. It was (laughs) snowmanable. Air energy, snowmanable. We're inventing all the words today. I do that. Well, we certainly are glad to have you listening. Mm -hmm. And uh, we are in the midst of this series on marriage, and we're inviting different friends of ours to talk about what is uh, a a complicated, but also really wonderful gift that God's given to us that's called marriage. And uh, I'm really loving the diversity of guests, experiences, and uh, and, and today's uh, friends are no exception to just spectacular, unique wisdom. Yes. I love that because it really has been such a joy to get to see different marriages, different dynamics, different gifts, different strengths. It's so beautiful to see how God brings people together and then to see Him grow them and shape them and use them. It's just been such a joy. And I'm really excited about today's guests. Well, and we are one week away from the release of the Marriage Devotional, Mm. uh, our first book on the subject of marriage and a resource that we hope encourages and helps uh, couples to stay Mm -hmm. connected, to stay linked up in their relationship to God and with each other. And so that's just next week. How are you? How are you feeling about that? I feel great. I feel like I am not there yet. So I haven't really felt you haven't feelings. processed it yet <laughs> i'm just trying to get through today when you see it pop up on the to-do list for the day oh release book you'll be like oh now i feel this yeah I, I i feel like i've been getting more and more excited as i've been hearing from people no book i've ever announced or or written that we've worked on has any has as many people texted me about oh. i feel like lots of people are texting me like i'm really excited about this That's book awesome. and they're like asking for for a free one and stuff like that, which is fine. Uh, but uh, where can I buy this book? Yeah, we, yeah, that's the best one to ask an author. Where where could I get one? Oh. Let me Google that for you. <laughs> uh, what they're really saying is, please, could can you give you get me, me one? a free one? That's so fun. I want to not invest in my life. Well, as you saw in the description, if you, <laughs> uh, no, yeah, geez, Jenny, you're not so normally so cutthroat. Uh, that's hilarious. Um, we have Chad and Julia Veach on, uh, who have been longtime friends of ours. We've been uh, in relationship with them for a decade. Ten years. Uh, exactly, Ten years. Exactly a decade. And uh, they are incredible. They lead a church in Los Angeles, Zoe Church. They have four kids, um, three boys and a little girl mm-hmm. named Georgia, who's actually the oldest of, yeah. their, of their children. So they're the exact flip opposite of us. Yeah. We're oldest all is boys. a girl and then three boys and we have, well. Exact. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Four girls in a boy. They just had the boy, boys at the end, yes. girl first. But is, do you see what I meant when I meant inverse? Yes. Yeah, okay. 
I, I'm not confused. You're not confused? <laughs> Apparently, apparently I am. Uh, but Chad has written a number of books. His newest is about prayer. And we do talk about that at the end of the episode. And yeah. what what they found works for them in prayer life, which is so different from other couples we've talked mm-hmm. to. And I think that's very freeing to me. So and not freeing. restricting to, to think that our prayer life has to be exactly like, you know, that's one of the things you find when you look back in church history, even you know, from Charles Spurgeon and his wife uh, to to other great leaders, Billy Graham's dynamic with Ruth doesn't have to be exactly yours. Yeah. So we can learn from him, be inspired by him yeah. without copying. Totally. I love it. It's well, exciting. Jenny, uh, I have three things that I want to put into practice from this conversation, actionable tips that I thought were very paradigm shifting for our marriage. So I'm excited to put those into play. Yeah. And then I've got a documentary to watch. They assigned me homework. They did. They really did. And I just love, I love Julie. I love Chad and Julia, but I love hearing from Julie because she it's, it's her first time on the podcast and her her voice, who she is, I just love her so much. And I, I know what she says today is going to encourage so many of us. It's going to make you want to dance in your kitchen. Mm-hmm. So be careful. Mm-hmm. Hello, y'all. Mm-hmm. Well, gosh, I, we, we, I just want to say before we uh, transition to the conversation, how thankful I am to those of you who listen yeah. every week. It's a labor of love for us and a joy for us to come in, turn these mics on and, uh, and get to talk to you and be a part of your life and yeah. that you would let us serve you and introduce you to some of our friends and have these conversations, mm. not only with you, but also for you. Yeah. Uh, and we, we always try to be mindful of what the person listening to this podcast would want to ask if they could. And so um, I, I would say this one, especially if you know anybody in your life who has a child with special needs, yeah. uh, this would be a great conversation to, to send their way. And uh, Chad and Julia have such a wealth um, that they get to share with us all yeah. for, for what they've, they've dealt with and yeah. are dealing with. So. Yeah. Well, we love you. Enjoy this episode. All right. Well, Chad and Julia Beach, uh, it is such an enormous privilege to have you guys on today. Chad, for a return visit, and Julia Beach, first time ever in your life on Hey, It's the Luscos. Everybody Welcome. losing their minds. Everyone is losing their minds. <laughs> Insert the clap. Thank like you guys that. for coming like on today. Oh, gosh. Thank you. It's so good to see you. I think that we're just going to catch up the whole time. I know. We're Honestly. Double date. Yeah. I feel, we are. I feel like we have a lot to catch up on because we have not been, it's really probably one of the longest stretches of not being in the same room together since we've known each other since December 12th, 2012, the day we met. I, I don't like it. Yeah. I don't, yeah, I don't like, it. like it. And I was just going to, I want to go on record and say we are such enormous fans of the Luscos. Yes. Hey, it's the Luscos. We <laughs> love you from the day we met in Soho, New York to Aww. right now recording this podcast. You guys have been nothing but kind, generous. You guys are the gold center of classic. You have your own room for wrapping gifts. That's how many gifts you give away. Wow. You are not a rap artist. You are a rapper. And I, we just adore you guys. Oh. I'm not. I'm not going to put anyone on blast. But the flowers that you sent this week, which were stunning, our assistant said, "Wow, we need to do better." <laughs> yes, yes. She goes. I'm telling you, you she guys goes, are the guess, gold standard. She goes, "Guess who these are from?" I want you to guess. When, when, because. Everyone here knows. Yeah. When Paul said to Timothy, you set the standard, you're the only people I know that have applied that verse. You're my only friends. <laughs> that is so funny. Oh my gosh. Well, well, we I'm, love I, you guys. I get no our credit for any of this. This is all Jenny and her team. All, and, yes. Amazing. Uh, well, you guys, I, well, I want, we're, we have a lot of things we want to talk about. One of the things we're going to talk about in this conversation is Chad's newest book, which I'm holding here, which is so fun. And probably the first book I've seen in a long time to use the color mint. Mm, so yes. we are going to talk about the artistic direction. We're going to talk about the beauty of the stash <laughs> going strong yes. on the stool. This photograph yeah. right here. What are you, Jesse Constopoulos from Full it's, House? It's so good. <laughs> Great call. Honestly, right? I mean, it's full blown. Um, we are, I do want to talk about this. And, and we are going to talk about marriage because we are on a kick right now uh, talking about this fall, just talking about all things marriage. We're obsessed with marriage. Right. We're grateful for marriage. Uh, and we want to help people grow. And you guys are perfect people to help with that on lots of levels. Yes. On the fun level, on the Dealing with adversity level. Failure level, yes. <laughs> failure. Yes, I agree. Yes, yeah, yes. When Mistakes I think about failure made. in marriage, I think about the beaches. Yeah. <laughs> but... <laughs> 
Wow. By the way, I saw you guys <laughs> recently. Oh, I, I don't think many people do better on TikTok than you guys. You guys crush TikTok. Julia knows I'm a TikToker. I send her constant, look at this recipe. Look at this one. Look at this travel. But you guys are, Make and I saw recipe. you guys do a, a TikTok way. recently on marriage. And it was, I can't remember the title, but I was thinking, gosh, you guys are so good on camera with great content. Wow, you guys are too kind. The, and and honestly, I've, I might literally have shown your TikToks and the, the the Zoe Church TikToks. You guys are so creative in how you bring the gospel to different places. So still to come, all of that. But I thought we'd just start out by catching up a little bit. Julie, you just had a big birthday. It seemed like there was some serious karaoke going down. <laughs> <laughs> You'll have to is let me know is, because I haven't is, been on Instagram for a while. Jenny's so. got a pure soul. <laughs> Oh, Jenny. Julie was belting I, out. What song were you singing? What song was that? Chad sent me a clip. I I will survive. I will this survive. Is, uh, is that yeah. Aretha? Uh, is it Aretha? Oh, I don't oh, know. I I believe so. Man. Do the intro oh, part. Do that. the intro oh, part. Oh no, I think Jenny's taking it. No. Jenny took a falsetto <laughs> stab part. at it. I, and there we go. I, I like. It, I don't Jenny. know if it's considered karaoke if it's a live band is and there's no words and then you realize when you turn forty that you not only need glasses but you really need glasses in the evening. So <laughs> it's real. I thought it's like a real I. I, yeah, I don't trust myself driving at night these days, but I thought that I could read from my phone the lyrics, and so I went really strong for the first two lines, and then I looked at my phone, I couldn't read the words. <laughs> so awesome there was a lot. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I'm seeing Gloria can, can Gavner. Get, Does that, say, does that ring a bell? Can I get my cheaters? Oh, wow. I, I, I've not heard that name. It actually is Gloria. Gloria that is Gainer. right. Gainer. That wow. is right. Look Gainer. at us. We're both having to squint to even see it. It's real. You know, yeah, I just yeah. got diagnosed as having a cataract. And they oh. said it's going to literally, it's a firework. I don't know if you remember, I got hit with a firework in the eye. Yes. And the I residual remember. of that, oh, even shit. though my vision got better after the fact, is that I developed a cataract, Gloria Gaynor. Oh. Um, and so they were saying I have to have an artificial lens put on. And it's like, you're going to start oh, to notice your vision deteriorate at night and driving. And it's just like, oh, oh that's old people problems, man. That's old yeah, people problems. I'm, I think I'm there. You know, at night, I should not be behind a wheel. Wow. <laughs> Do you, do you use guys, readers? So, yeah. Do you use, do you wear Cheaters? glasses ever? No, no, I just squint. By the way, guys, <laughs> I think I'm, I, I think I'm going to take the plunge. I'm going to do LASIK. I don't know when, but I've decided I'm, in the, in the, in the next couple of years, I'm committing to the whole thing. I'm going full. I'm go, I might lose my glasses. Wow. They're, kind of of my trade, they're kind of a trademark piece for you. Th that's what I'm saying. It's a, it's going to be an exchange. I don't, maybe I'll, you know, forever people would ask. Are those real? And maybe in a couple of years, I will have to reply, they are not. Yeah. Okay, but yeah. Wait, I will when, wake up and see what time it is. That's what I'm excited but about. But real, what does that, real mean? They're real glasses. They're not figments of their imagination. Of course, they're real. I appreciate what that. What do you mean? I they're a prop. That, so. They're a part of my repertoire. <laughs> Exactly. I, I think that the young listeners right now are getting terrified, but <laughs> this is what happens when you get older. All of your catching up has to do with your doctor's appointments. <laughs> like if you don't reference an RX number or a doctor's visit when with your friends, when you hit 40s, you're not living. It's so you know, true. true. It's true. So what, what are the biggest aches and, and pains you're complaining of besides vision at the moment? <laughs> Well, Julia just uh, got her life changed from the chiropractor last week. She was in a lot of pain. Oh, oh, you guys are workout people. Julia's an Orange Theory fitness person. The chiropractor is a is it's a frequent stop for us. Orange Theory fitness person. That's a. Well, I'll tell you what. When, when you say that, I think about Robert Madu, but he told me he's yeah, not. Yeah, yeah. He told me he's not doing it anymore. Why did he stop? I thought that the world was going to stop turning on its axis when he said that. Yes. He was like their spokesman. Yeah. Yeah, he's not been going. I was he like, was the face of the franchise. The face of the franchise. Taylor is the face of Chomps and Robert. <laughs> Robert Taylor, the, Taylor is the face of Joyce Meyer Ministries. Wow, that's true too. That was unbelievable. I did. That I was that. fantastic. That was fantastic. Uh, yeah. She got me out loud. You know, you know, the sign that something is funny is if they genuinely get you out loud. Yes. Not if you write LOL. But if genuinely they get you, she got me out loud. I laughed. Or yeah. when she's laughing at herself. Oh, she's the best. Well, they when she best. was like dancing in the kitchen, though, that was when it really yeah, got me. Yeah, because yeah, yeah. she was like, had the exact facial expression, but then was like, just like 
close to a twerk, not full twerk, but close to a twerk. It was like, this is something's going, something's going incredibly right here. This is things that Joyce Meyer has never participated in, but yes. Oh my gosh. Wow. Okay. So what are, what are the complaints then? Okay. Julia's back. <laughs> Julia, Julia's vision. back. Uh, it is November, the month of Thanksgiving, and we're going to talk about what we're ungrateful for. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, I'm going to say, hip, I'm just going to put it out there. My hip flexors. Uh, the hip no, flexors. I'm going to uh, say, dude, that, that prostate exam, <laughs> we're just going to put that in the category of things censored. I'm not thankful for. I mean, this I'm grateful for censored. not getting prostate cancer, but geez, oh, man. No. It's the Luscos. Hey, hey it's the Luscos. Hey. That, that Hi, whole, kids. Hey, you know, you're 40, <laughs> Levi. The doctor said, there's something we need to talk about. There's just an important part of your yearly checkup. And I was like, I'm not emotionally ready for this, uh, this yes. Rubicon to be crossed. <laughs> oh, wow. But get your physical we're, kids. Saves lives. <laughs> we're in this awesome sweet spot of uh, our kids' ages where they're still saying the most amazing oh. observant things mm. that are like accurately, rudely honest. <laughs> so uh, it is... It is very aware how old we are because of the comment. Like my son on Saturday night, he's like, mom, are you going to put makeup on that tomorrow for church? You know, it's just things like that where you're like, (laughs) which one said this? That is not okay. Our kids are awesome. (laughs) Yes, they are. No, they are. They're, they are unbelievable. (laughs) They are. They're so funny. You need to put makeup on that. (laughs) So what, what are your guys' ages right now? What are you guys? We're 17, 12, 10, and five. Wow. Yeah, so quite the, the gauntlet. Yeah, we're still Gosh. still at the five year old who's occasionally wetting the bed. I'm not throwing anybody under yeah. the bus here, but it happens. Hey, no, and it happens. Yeah. It does. We're it not happens. mentioning any names. No, that was Olivia. No, I'm, jo- no. I'm joking. Our, <laughs> our only our only son, Jen, Jenny. Jenny. <laughs> if she has, to, I have to cut her off the Lacroix at like five thirty, <laughs> or it's messy. You know, we have the plastic sheets. Yeah. <laughs> These these kombuchas are crazy, man. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah. And you guys are let's see. I've, I have four, ten, nine, seven, and four. That is not in the right order. Wait, no, no, no. Children four. is four. You're ten, nine, seven, four, right? Yeah, we. we that's exactly right. Yeah. We're about to be all odds uh, coming up by February. We'll be eleven, nine, seven, five by February. Wow. Oh my gosh. I can't believe Clive it's is. It's so fun. Yeah, Clive. that's quick. And you and, and that we're we're done. There's no more. There's no more beach babies. We are. We are done. And I'm really grateful. I'm very thankful to be done. And the decade of pregnancy, Julie is grateful. Yeah. <laughs> I know it was. It was fun, but I. That's something that I'm. Is it, isn't it amazing now when you get well. around a newborn and you like you get to hold a baby and you're like, oh, I loved this. This was so fun. Those days, like now. You miss it. In the time, it was kind of like we were in the fire, yeah. you know, yeah. and there's a little Joel Houston coming to my mind. There was another in the fire. Mm-hmm. I feel like there was always another one coming. Yes. But now I can enjoy other people's babies because I get to give them back. Totally. It's so funny because Lennox is five. We were on our family vacation a couple weeks ago, and I was just like seeing all these cute, adorable babies everywhere I went. And I was just like, I just want to hold one. Like, can I just yeah. walk up to someone and say, can I hold your baby for you? And then I was like, I guess I'll just I'll just serve in the babies at church and, and get my yes. fix. And the smell of a newborn baby, that's nothing like that. Smell of this little cute head. Yes. The By the way, I, we were walking through our building that we just bought. Congratulations. You're in LA. Amazing. Thank you. And I was referencing your building. One of the most genius things I've seen in a kids' ministry space was when you put up in your kids' ministry, touch these walls. Oh, yeah. Every kid is told, don't touch the walls. And you had the genius to go, every kid here, please come touch these walls. You guys are so good with oh, kids. Oh, man. Well, that it wasn't good during COVID, but. Now it's great. Oh yeah, right. Don't we touch to, anything. We had to pull all the bricks out <laughs> of the Lego everything. trough, like everything. Yeah, that was tough. But yes. now it's all back. We're touching everything again. That is important. Well, tell us about this building. That's very exciting because yeah. you guys, you guys were the the vagrant migrant workers, just everywhere, anywhere, all the places. Load and load out. Goodness. So yes. what? What? Tell us about the building. Yeah, I. I mean, it's a beautiful miracle story, but uh, the it was the fourth. Uh, Church of Christ Scientists Church it built in 1924, and uh, then it was a Buddhist temple in the 90s. So it has it's in a really cool area in 
the east side of Los Angeles. And so we're undergoing learning about its structure and having to go um, through a renovation process. But the bones of the building are really beautiful. Beautiful. And um, we're looking forward to it. You'll, you'll love this, you guys, because I know you know Abbott Kinney. Where it is on Figueroa and Highland Park, they call that the Abbott Kinney of the East Side. Oh, wow. So it's on a really cool street. It's got, you know, yeah. Go Get Em Tiger and Jenny's Ice Cream and all that right mm. right down the street from it. It's a beautiful building. I can't wait for you guys to see it. Is there more than one Go Get Em Tiger or is it just a one? Yeah, yeah. There's there's a number of them in LA. Like yeah. So the one I've been to is in yeah. Filipino Town. Is that close to this one? No. Would that be different? I'm, I'm not sure where Filipino Town we, is. We, we would be more east than that. Okay. Mm. The, this building. Jenny, I've never yeah. taken you to Filipino Town. I feel like I did go there. I feel like I went oh, with you to, to that Go Get Em Tiger. Tiger. Oh, but that was, was that the one across it, from? I don't know. Anyway. But the fact that you know Go Get Em Tiger, it's good. That's a good spot, right? Yeah. Good coffee. Yeah. And yeah. it's such a good Spider Man reference, you know? Oh. What Mary I Jane like always it. said to him when he would go out to fight crime, right? Go Get Em Tiger. Go get him, Tiger. Go get him, Tiger. Okay, so that's exciting. So when do you, when will you get to start meeting in it? So it looks like great uh, question. Yeah, that's a great question. We just <laughs> right before this, we were on a call with our owners rep and our architect and all that. But uh, we're hoping this next co- coming summer in 2023. And right now, you saw the HQ, which is where you're at right now, right? Yep. Yep. Mm-hmm. yep. And then still bumping in every Sunday. Will you do it in stages? Like, will you be able to move offices in first, or will it be just everything all at the same time? We're not going to uh, move our offices into this building. We'll keep our okay. ministry center on the west side, and um, we'll stay put for a bit. Yeah, yeah. we're like we yeah we're in a lease here for a number of uh, more years, so we'll stay here with our offices, and then, you know, we'll just try and outfit this new space as best as we can with... It's 20,000 square feet, 10,000 square feet upstairs and 10,000 square feet downstairs. So it actually works perfect for kids and church. Wow. So good. Oh, that's well, so exciting. For any, congratulations. Yeah. Um, I can't even uh, imagine just the complexity of being in such a large city with such an intense market trying to find a space. And I just have been so proud watching you guys like with the exodus of people from big cities. Like you guys have been like, not only we're staying right here, we're fighting for this city. We're not even thinking about anything else, but you've also been so positive about the city. Every time I've heard you talk about it, there's no, there's been no sense of like, Oh, you know, LA, like there's just, you guys just have such a love for this place. God's called you to live, which is beautiful. So inspiring. Oh, we love LA. Genuinely. You guys know it's like, we just love the city. We love the people. We love the way it moves. We're so biased. We think we have the best food and the best coffee and the best people in the world. So yeah, and it's not. It's definitely not something that it's like you know. Let's let's have a positive confession. We genuinely don't know any other way. Like we just mm-hmm. love the city. And it's not that we convince ourselves. You know, like yeah. we're of the belief that wherever God has you, yes. like that's the greatest place. But we don't have to convince ourselves. We both have this quirky sentiment when we travel, when we come home to LAX, which is an airport that a lot of people despise. We oh, like that, get, new, get, that new Delta we terminal is very giddy. nice in that airport, by the way. <laughs> yeah. Hey, Delta is terminal is there? strong. Yeah. Uh, we like both like love the smell of the pavement. And when you walk <laughs> out and you hear people honking, it just like, this is home. It's, it's good. the best. You didn't yeah. include the weather, but when you talk about perfect uh, this, perfect this, you got to include yeah, the weather. We didn't want to brag. Yeah. We didn't want to brag. We know? call it, you know, <laughs> the other day someone's like, you know, people complain about, you know, the taxes here. And he goes, look up. He's like, that weather, that's called a sunshine tax. And I was like, <laughs> I'll gladly pay that tax. Seriously. Incredible. Oh my gosh. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Well, um, when Chad was on back in 2020, Julie, he shared a little bit uh, for those listening with, you know, how you guys met, which is such a unique story. Knowing each other your whole lives, your parents' best friends, that he talked about the Thanksgiving dinner where you finally looked up and saw each other with fresh eyes because you had both blossomed. Uh, <laughs> I think that's the language he used. I don't know. That's, that's my. I was say this is my side of the story. Two sides to every story. I want to yeah. hear. Yeah, so Julia's I was going to say we got to hear Julia's side of the story because we—that's what I was getting. At. We've heard Chad's side of how we met and fell in love and rediscovered each other and all the things, but we need to kind of hear the the Julia uh, yes. edit on it. Yes. 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 Oh man. Okay. Yeah. There's, there's definitely some edits. He, um, <laughs> flirted with my sister the entire Thanksgiving. Okay. Weekend. Okay. <laughs> wow. That uh, was yeah, not that my happened. fault. That was, that was not my fault. It was involuntary flirtatious. <laughs> oh, <no. laughs> 
<laughs> I guys, I'm here to serve. <laughs> yeah. Uh, no, he was a 28 year old youth pastor, and he needed a date to a staff Christmas party. And the the culture of the church that he was on staff at was you're required to bring a date. So he didn't want to invite anyone from the church because it would mean something, um, mostly to the rumblers of people observing. And so he invited me because I was out of town. I was safe. And he, in his words, it was like inviting your cousin. So uh, (laughs) I was the safe cousin invite. And I didn't want it to be a big deal, so I played it off like, oh, I had business in the Seattle area, which I did. My I was living in Portland, but I had um, our corporate offices were in the Seattle area. So I got ready in a Banana Republic dressing room on Fifth Avenue, downtown Seattle. I said, pick me up, because that's what girls do that make them think that it doesn't matter to them. I put on fake eyelashes as fast as possible. I got in the car. The eyelash glue got stuck in my eyeball. I had an infected eye the entire night. My dress broke on the dance floor. He saw too much. My my shoe broke. But he decided that night that this was it. That was a wrap for him. True. Oh, my God. But I, I will say that evening, I was not quite there He was there, but I wasn't there. But we had an amazing conversation that I'll never forget about how love is a choice. And I looked at him. I said, like, I could choose you and choose to love you forever. And so I remember specifically where we were at when we had that conversation, not knowing that he had already chose me. Stop. Wow. Well, that gets worse, but even better, really. Honestly. (laughs) Gets worse before it gets better. I feel like that could be a movie. I mean, really, honestly. Yes. Yes. Yeah. All the okay, so how old? So you guys basically kind of grew up knowing each other. Yeah. Because the Cause parents, your parents, parents were best were friends. friends. Okay, so that's, I love that. And always but vacations. It was, it was before social media stalking. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I got a Facebook mm-hmm. to find out more about him. And, uh, <laughs> But I, I think in that day when you don't live in the city or go to the same church, you're really not that close of friends so we were family friends but we would just catch up annually and that was the extent of it and because i'm old i was older she would always hang out with my little sister when they would come over so like you know i'm a i'm a senior in high school she's a freshman with my sister they're off hanging out i'm the i'm hanging out with my buddies so there was never a time growing up where i where it was like even on my mind probably didn't even have a lot of one-on-one conversations even through that time no no yeah no yeah, and then you, your courtship that. was pretty fast too, right? Yeah, six, six months. months. Yeah, that's not too. That's not too. So the dating and engagement was all six months. Oh, oh, oh no, nine. dated six months and then engaged uh, for three months. So nine oh, months that's not, total. That's not too fast. I mean, that's no, not yeah. too crazy. No, I mean, you I weren't mean, like in a rush to the altar. No, no. Well, but, he did propose and said, we can either get married or you can get pregnant. Choose your own adventure. So that, hap- <laughs> that happened. That wasn't when I proposed, but that did. <laughs> Will yeah, you that, marry that me? Definitely, that's definitely a quote. Yeah. It's romantic. I was 28 no. year old. I was a 28 year old virgin and I was, as the scriptures say, burning. Yeah, I got gotcha. you. <laughs> I got gotcha. you. He said, I got you. Got gotcha. you. I will. Okay. This is, this is a fact for anyone um that has yet to be married. We never, when we dated, we never talked about getting engaged, getting married, our future together. And so I think in this day and era, like that's something a lot of people discuss. So it was very traditional in the sense when he proposed, we had never talked about a ring, getting engaged, moving, Mm. living life in the future together. So that was an adventure. That Does, was but is that a strength? Because in my mind, I'm hearing that as a strength. I find it to be a it. little bit bizarre that they're almost like you're almost planning your life together and talking as though it's a fact without there being the actual sealing of the deal. Yeah, we were we were trained, we were raised that you don't do that. You know, you don't until there's a ring, until you get proposed. Don't don't even. You know, it, you know, the scripture comes to mind, don't awaken love until the time is due, right? But it's like, I, I, part of that was that whole thing. Don't awaken things that should be, you know, at rest, at ease. Don't put that too forward. Because then if you do all that and there's no ring, you got to walk it back. And you've promised all these things to someone that, that, that it gets a little tricky after that. Mm. Now, how did I, you actually propose? Was there a... 
This is a great story. Can I tell this one? Yeah. Okay, so she'll edit it. She'll get to be the DVD commentary, the deleted scene. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. I don't call it commentary. I call it a merger. Oh, you know, yeah. we merge the stories. Um, yeah, I'm not an interrupter, Levi. Lanes. Jeez. Uh, no, I will say that the morning that he proposed, and I didn't know it was happening. I had no clue, obviously. Uh, my girlfriend and I, we were at a Starbucks in Portland, and we did our devotions together. And early in the morning, I journaled about Ecclesiastes. Uh, He makes everything beautiful in its time. And um, there was obviously a journey and uh, a bad relationship, not obviously, but uh, there was a bad relationship before Chad. And so uh, just to see God's beautiful hand on how he orchestrated that. It was, it was really cool. Okay. Now the fun so, part. So Go then ahead. that afternoon, a, a buddy of mine that was working for her, her dad's youth pastor helped, uh, organize an amazing race. So the plan was Julia would be in this race. She wouldn't realize this is going on and everyone had their teams and they met somewhere. And then you got to go here all, all throughout the city of Portland. And there is a mansion in Portland called, you guys probably know it. It's the Piddock, Piddock, Piddock yeah. mansion. It's on the hill, and right? Yeah, it's on the hill, exactly, and overlooks the city. So Julia gets to the mansion. There's the host there, and she's racing. Julia's extremely competitive, and well. the, the, the instructions are she's got to go around the back to you know find this thing. So Julia comes roaring around the corner to the back of this mansion, which is, you know, just stunning view of the city. Not like zoo animal roaring. It's like a, and it's like a hiking trails to get there, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You got to, yeah, exactly. Yeah. So exactly. she comes around the corner. I'm in a suit. And I'm I've got sweating. a photographer hiding. Yeah. Got some friends there. She comes around. She sees me and she just screams like, it's all, it's a lot to take in in real time, right? So, so I'm there and I'm like, I'm ready for her to come to me, but she's kind of like, she's too shocked to like really step forward. So I got to kind of take some steps towards her. And anyways, long story short, I got, I got on my knee and I asked her and then everybody else in the race came out and it was a really cool scene. We threw a party that night. I, but I did say, did I win the race? <laughs> yeah, yeah. After yes, her first question. So did I win? Yeah. There's no, there's no uh, competitiveness at all though. No. Anywhere. Yeah. 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 So yeah, that and then we had a big party that night at her parents' house. But yeah, that was really special. Yeah, it was. Fun. That's amazing. Okay, so you hired a photographer. I feel like that was that's rare in that time, that season of life. I mean, I guess you guys right? have been married fourteen years. When I say hired, there was a guy that worked at the church who drove down from Seattle with me, Aww. and he is a friend that helped take photos. Yes. What I think is weird these days, and this now I'm like sound like an old man, is <laughs> yeah. when like yeah, well, the girl old. the girl knows it's happening and is complicit yeah. in planning the proposal, and she's you, dressed you in can white. tell she's dressed in white. It's at twelve her, hours at a spa. Her fingernails are perfectly done <clears throat> and ready for that ring to be put on it. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, it's just kind of a different day. It's, different. it's a different day because even even the whole first look thing, you know, we're like, oh yeah. I think there's something so powerful about the first time you see your spouse being that moment at the back of the altar, you know, at the back of the oh. aisle. There's nothing like that. Yeah. Did you guys see each other yeah. that day beforehand? We had a meet. We we, we did, did a, a first look. Yeah, we, we did. did a first look. I yeah. do love that. I I like the tradition of the first look is coming down the altar. I I, w- I wish we would have ran that. Yeah, because we did a we did a right before photos. We had a yeah yeah right before we took pictures. Uh, but yeah, you know, there's something about just tradition and. Although I will say the downside cool of guys. it is, I was like. I, because I didn't have a first look, it all hit me with like like a semi hitting me when she showed up at the back oh. of the aisle. I start so messing sloppy. like sloppy. sloppy, like like <laughs> like to a disturbing degree. There's there's <laughs> mucus. <laughs> it's messy. It's distracting to the ceremony. Maybe I'm walking back my opinion now. <laughs> yeah. Well, actually, I wish we had a first people, look. <laughs> people are like, is he okay? We might need yeah. to call a doctor. He is may he have sad that he's getting married. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, Yeah, not good. So that's exciting. Okay, so 14 years, um, the... The, the seasons of life, the intensity of church planning, you guys, uh, all the kids, all the books, all the things, I can't imagine uh, there have not been some 
some hard moments in that, of course. you know, and yeah. I would be just be curious, you know, 30,000 feet, what have been some of the harder phases? I mean, you guys have been very open about all these things, but just kind of like when it comes to specifically the marriage, mm -hmm. uh, what have been some of the hardest phases? Yeah, I, I, I make a joke, you know, no one, this is a joke, but um, my my parenting style is like blackout or freak out. Like there's nothing in between. Uh, that, that's not all real, but every joke is half real. But uh, I will say like people talk about starting a church or the first year and it's terrifying and challenging. I loved it because I like the extremity of adventure and I love the boringness of routine and I do great in those two extremes. So like on the mountaintop or like very mundane routine, like both of those I do great. Where I look back and there was a lot of challenges for us within our marriage were the disruptions of uncontrolled. So either the adventure is like, I knew I was prepared for the unknown. Mm. And then in the routine, I had so much control. So mm. it was, it was in the middle where mo most of life is, yeah. is, is where I feel like I saw the most hits on our our home and our flow and our marriage. And I think that has a, a lot to do with uh, my personality and not uh, being prepared for battle and uh, making sure, you know, margin is a tricky word as mm -hmm. a mom, but making sure I had enough to go into storms. So because I was either blacking out, I, I wasn't, I wasn't fully ready for, so my, I, my response to adversity was more of a reaction. Yeah. And so, and then I think the reactions were easily turned to your spouse because who, you know, who, who you love the most takes right. it. Yeah. yeah. So, so yeah, I think that would be. I was going to say probably two. Yeah. When you say disruptions, I think of to, yeah, you, you know, you have any, any relationship takes hard work, right? I think to stand out when you say disruptions, obviously George's diagnosis is a disruption mm. and that really, you know, throws you, you know, you guys have experienced loss and grief and what that does to your house. Those aren't fun days, you know, these aren't the tennis summers where you're having fun and creating new memories. There's a real disruption there. So I agree. And I think COVID COVID was really hard, that, that disruption. Mm -hmm. uh, you take away your social life. Julia is very social, family. If, if she could have her way, it, we'd live in like a house with four or five other families, communal living. Commune. Yeah, yeah commune. Cult. Cult. Yeah. Cult. yeah. Okay. Okay. And and we've been accused of we'll that. Go Anyways, um, we'll go there. Yeah, we'll go there. She's we merging. Fine. She's we merging school bus, the stories. School bus buried in the backyard. It's fine. Yeah. <laughs> oh my gosh. Oh, wow. You much. guys all have you guys all have a GTAT, right? Yeah. Colt. Anyways, uh, uh, right here. Hello. But, yeah, exactly. Oh, no. <laughs> but um, I think yeah, disruptions uh have definitely you know been times where you go, wow, we got to we got to work really hard right now. It's always, you know, it's always work. You, you, you have, you know, lives that you guys live, you know, where you're traveling, you got a demand, you're trying to lead a staff, uh, you've got dynamics with family, you're writing books, you know, all that kind of stuff. You know, we live a pretty quick life, you know, yeah. um, how you're trying to slow it down as, as, as best as possible. But I, I agree. Every time there's been a disruption, uh, that's been a real, a real challenging season for us. Yeah. And I can't imagine. I mean, what I think we all, we all effortlessly look at what we do sometimes, but then when we look at other people, we just have the most admiration. I mean, people tell us, I can't, I can't imagine what you, how you carry what you carry. But it's like, when I think about you guys, I mean, you, you talked last time, Chad, about just days of just seizures and just, you guys have been so open about that struggle with Georgia and yeah. just dealing with, um, with, with with the reality of life with special needs and uh, just how that at times I, I can imagine would present such a, uh, a a weight for the marriage to carry and how 
for a lot of people that would, you know, really cause resentment and just eventually erosion. So how, how have you guys been able to kind of proactively, um, strengthen the marriage in, in the face of that, you know? Yeah. I, th I think when you talk about uh, Georgia specifically, uh, the neurologist who, um, if you're a neurologist listening, uh, I, I, appreciate you yes. and your brain, but uh, generally they're not known for the best bedside manner. Mm. And the way that he communicated uh, George's specific diagnosis, he also included the statistic of marriage. And he told us that 70% of marriages fail with a severe diagnosis for their child. Wow. And that I remember... Chad and I both being like, oh, yeah, right. Like, that's not going to affect us. Like, we're tough. Like, we, we know how to fight. But I think where I saw the diagnosis affect our marriage and our home was that when, when you feel really weary and, I, and you wouldn't realize that it was wearing on you when she was in those seizure seasons because you're like, oh, this is our normal. This is part of my life. And so I wasn't communicating that I was weary. I wasn't communicating what I needed. I wasn't, I, you know, I'm not really an external processor by nature. I have a hard time actually in therapy, <laughs> but I'm like, I, I wasn't able to tell Chad what I needed effectively from him until it was too late. Mm. Um, and I was just like, oh, this is, this is are where the cards that I was dealt. I just have to do it. I have to go through it. I can't go around it. But I think that looking back, there were so many different seasons and moments where I should have told him, this is what I'm feeling. This is what I need from you. This is actually what I need for me, um, which is is hard for some moms to yeah. say, and yep. um, and I think that I I I was at fault because I I didn't give my space, I didn't give myself space to communicate that, mm. and I didn't set Chad up for a win for that because he ultimately wants to make me happy, and um, I just have to tell him how to do that in yeah. a way that works for the home. But yeah, so yeah, I think when you that. use the word proactive, I would say one thing that we've had to really work on still do is that we are, we could be so reactive. Our strength has always been like, Hey, this is broke. We're going to fix it. And we do, but we usually wait till it's broke. Right. Mm. So I, the, just the word proactive is like, ah, oh, that's such a challenging word for me because I feel like a lot of our world you know, you're like, you're so proactive about the church. You're so proactive about parenting. And it's like you, you, the marriage has to have some proactive, you know, qualities and priorities to it. Otherwise you get yourself into a, a, a situation like what Julia's saying, where it's like, I wanted to help. I wanted to please. I didn't know you were feeling that way. So we've had to, you know, work through, uh, how do you, how do you make a better game plan? It's like, it's like what Mike Tyson said, right? Everyone has a plan until they get punched in the face. Right. You get punched in the face as a as a family, as a in a, in your marriage, and you're like, oh crud. Right. We're we're in some hot water here. What do we do? So we've actually had to, you know, figure that out. I I would also say like something that we didn't realize that worked great for us until as of late, like Chad was saying, being proactive had to do a lot with creativity and we're really great at saying like oh we could do this better or we have a creative idea for this but applying that to our everyday marriage was something that like Chad was saying is that we we didn't utilize that strength that God had given each of us to say hey Friday mornings what if we added this creativity to our flow mm. and to our communication and we're filled with those ideas, but we just utilize those, uh, you know, for the kids or for the home design or for work writing a sermon. Blank. Yeah, right. Yes, yeah, yeah, yes. yeah. Book, whatever. <laughs> but I was like, oh, like we're wired to have innovative ideas. Like, yes. why don't we apply that to marriage? Why don't we apply that to how we communicate? 
And so that's so good. That, yeah. That's so good. I, I just imagine that encouraging listeners right now because what you were saying before, Julia, about not knowing what you needed, I think there's such um, grace in that because you were going through something that you had never gone through before. And you guys were facing something that was a disruption, that was a shock, and that was. And so I think even just giving ourselves grace to have that time to figure out what do I need? And even just the awareness that I need something and I need to give something, I need to receive something. And I think that that's so encouraging to every single one of us to just be aware of the fact that in the midst of the disruption, in the midst of the struggle, in the midst of the pain, that we need to be aware of what we need and how we communicate that. Because I'm, I'm the same as you. I I don't externally process. Levi will come to me and like lay out all his ideas about all the things. And I'm like, yeah, that's awesome. That's awesome. But for me, I have to think through like internally and then I present my well thought out uh, things. Um, but I'm learning more and more. Okay, when I'm feeling this way, I need to tell him. When I'm feeling that I need this, I need to tell him. And like you said, you're setting your spouse up to win and actually be able to, to help you and meet meet your need there. And so, um, that's just, so, that's so encouraging. It's great. But it is hard to hear that, you know, like, you know, and I'd never heard that statistic, um, but to be told, Hey, just so you know, only 25% of people are going to make it through this with the marriage intact. And it's like, Oh shoot. And I think for us, that's much lower, but when you lose a child, it's 50%, uh, supposedly of, of, of marriages Jeez. or something like that. It, it Maybe a little higher, but I think it's lower than that number. It, but all that to say, um, maybe you're right, but the, um, part of what you do is you go into like, almost like hypervigilant, like, like, Oh no, it's not going to be us crisis mode. And, and you can't stay adrenalized forever. Right. And I think what oh. you're describing is sort of like the weariness because it's not like one event and done. This is day in and day out and you can't rely on adrenaline for a decade. Right. So there yeah, has I mean, to be some sense of, you know, we're going to have to settle into and find ways to, to continue to uh, stay strong, right? Right. Yeah, I mean, I was just going to say, imagine, you know, and I, I give all the credit to Julia. You know, Julia has taken care of Georgia far more than anyone else uh, that has ever helped us and myself times two, times fives times 10, but she just is such a Keep caretaker, <laughs> such a caretaker. And, and I just can't emphasize it enough. I mean, imagine taking care of someone. She's going to be 11 in a few weeks. Imagine taking care of someone for 11 years and they've never said a word to you, mm. changing their diaper, feeding them, you know, multiple times a day, you know, crazy seizures. Last week we had to shut down our seizures because they were just out of control. And you're right. The adrenaline, maybe in the first month to two, but 11 years of that, that's selfless, sacrificial love. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That is unconditional love. And, you know, we said it from the beginning, you don't wish it on your worst enemy, but you wouldn't trade it for the world. Yeah. And, and the, the saying there is that, what does that do for you? It's like, you know what? How could you not have empathy? How could you not have compassion for others? How could you be so impressed with a car or a house or a famous person? You're just not impressed with much, you know? And so it, it grounds you, it humbles you. And, and after 11 years of that, it's like, you know, I... I have such a respect and such an admiration for Julia in the way that she has served Georgia. Mm. And Julia, you referenced, and I, everything you said is so so appropriate and true. And I, we feel the same way about you as well, Chad. And and that love and uh, and lightness of spirit. And I know that there's been through the trial and crucible, like that's that's how there's such a sweetness and 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 such a love of Jesus. And um, and it's so contagious. Um, but you mentioned, you know, like realizing you needed to articulate to Chad what you needed. Were there, were there times when you kind of like had breakthroughs in your ability to, to do that? Or was it just a, a steady thing? Or there are times mm -hmm. when you, that you can think of when you maybe really articulated and it was kind of a breakthrough for you both? Yeah, I, I, I mean, that's always evolving and improving. <laughs> and I will totally. say we're still learning, totally. um, you know how to communicate better, when to communicate better. 
um, when not to communicate at all. Yeah. <laughs> uh, whoopsies. So true. Guilty. Uh, yes. yeah. Guilty. I, I will say I, to a fault, wanted to do it all. And I wanted to prove that I could do it all until I realized I couldn't. Mm. And I utilized a lot of um, not only energy and hours, but a lot of confidence on your first kid. And the thing is, is when you invest so much into your oldest kid, and then there's like a joke, like the youngest kid has no rules, no curfew, no nothing. (laughs) Oh, yeah. The thing is, is like you depend on that energy to be transferred from your oldest and then the oldest leads it down. But what happened was, is when I give to something that had no investment return, it just was like depleting me. So then it kind of really messed with my security to like, oh, like, am I doing it all well? Mm. Am I? And so I think that was like a really vulnerable thing for me that I am like, I, I wish I had a little bit more of a check-in with Chad. Like, how do you think this is going? How, you know, a little bit more of a sounding board. Um, but I will say that when I had some revelations that like, I, I can't do it all or, I'm, I'm no longer doing it all to my standard is actually a, a, p, a, a large piece of it. Um, and I communicated to him, I was so surprised how receptive he was to wanting to help me. And so I'm like, oh, oh, wow, like you actually do want to step up? Like I wasn't, I, you know, I didn't give him the benefit of the doubt. Oh. And I think that um, that's something like I wish I did a lot earlier on was like, oh, just assume, not present it in a way like I'm, I'm prepared for you to be like, oh, I'm not, I'm not able to do that. But to be to, to assume that he was on my team. And so, um, yeah, I think that was something that we've learned specifically in the last few years. And then, um, that's incredible. I could, I can just tell you right now, like, so helpful. I wish I did it sooner. Like that, like that you're thinking that saying what you thought was going to be a hard thing. And here Chad is like, I I was hoping you'd ask and like Mm, the opposite of attack. I think that is so helpful for, for, for husbands and wives, both because there's parallels on both sides. We're like, we were big, we built this thing up to be some big scary thing. And it's like, man, I I had no idea. I didn't, I wanted to bless you. I didn't know how to. And Mm. that's insane. Good. There's a story that we we use often, like uh, she'll use on me uh, from my parent, my my parents. And there's a story about my mom. She packs all my dad's bags. It's it's a little facetious. It's but dramatic. It's dramatic. It, it, she's like she's like I'm doing all this. I'm taking. We had, you know, there's three of us. She's like I'm taking care of all these kids. I'm doing all the laundry. I'm doing all the cooking. I'm doing all the cleaning. And you're not doing nothing. So you you know until you can help, you're out. And so, you know, she put that on him and then he changed. And my memory of my dad growing up is that my dad was like very involved and very helpful and really served the house. And, you know, so they use that story to remind us there was a day that he wasn't. Mm. And I think, but, but, but the, but the heart at the heart level, like you're saying, Levi's like, I want to help. Tell me what I can do because I'll, I'll run that play. Mm. I've. I think too is like, we're all on the team. So we want the team to be better. And we utilize this in business and with our staff as we play on strength. So why don't we do better at that at home? And so this is like, this is something so practical, but has changed our life and our flow is that Chad was like, I really am good and enjoy loading up the kids and getting them in the car and getting out the door. So I was like, oh, you should do school drop-offs. And so it was like, he loved it. I saw that he was great at it, you know? And it just like, just those small things that I'm like, you know, I... I thought forever that I had to prove that I was superhuman, but mm. no one is, you know? What are you guys on the Enneagram? Did, she's, she's a one. I'm a three, Jenny's a nine. nine. And Chad, you're a seven? Nine. I'm a three. Three Everyone as well. Thinks that he, 
Everyone thinks that he's a seven. Yeah. Three wing seven. <laughs> Probably three wing Doesn't seven. Doesn't even exist, but fine. Yeah, we'll allow Maybe, it. Yeah. I think I'm actually three wing two. Yeah, you are. Yeah. Is two helper? Helper. You're three Which wing. I think You're I'm three wing two as well. Are. There I we go. I do like helping oh, people. Do you guys need two. anything? I could, I could. Um, no, recently we guys like <laughs> traveling, traveling, traveling agenda of what are, what are they called? Traveling. Like travel agent. agent. Everyone always, you probably get this. Everyone always texts me like, what, where, what should I eat in the city? What should I do? Oh, I'm thinking about buying camping that. stuff. Which, which one should I get? So he's always helping people. It's oh, dude. Awesome. I like that. <laughs> yesterday, I'm not trying to name drop here. Be, I know you know him, so I'm saying this name, but Phil Wickham came up yesterday to LA and he's like, where should I eat? I just, do you know how alive I came? Yeah. Right. <laughs> like I was just like, <laughs> oh, I've received that text this, from you. It's, it was bulleted. It was it was multiple PDF layers. It was <laughs> come on. Very extensive. It's just like I get so excited. I'm help. I want you to have the best experience. Yeah, I still I've never I still have never tasted better hummus than that uh, that Mediterranean place you guys took us to. Le, le, let's go. Oh my gosh. We have that we Maza. Have What's that called? Uh, well, I think we went to Bavel. Bavel. Is that right? Yeah, that's right. Bavel. Yeah, that's right. Oh, best. I crave it. I crave it. It's in my dreams. Um, I mean, you you guys had such an asset too. Both of you, incredible parents. I've met both of your parents and just get godly legacy and generational strength. And that's, that's powerful. But you guys have also, it seems like had to develop your own because it doesn't matter how good your parents' marriages are. Your marriage is a unique thing. You have a unique gift mix, unique calling, unique challenges. So what are some of the maybe, um, you've mentioned two that are incredible. Both, you mentioned it really quickly, but using creativity that you use at work all day and actually using that at home Mm. and approaching the assignment of duties and and, and how you guys approach things based on strengths, which is what we do intuitively at the workplace. Someone who's bad at admin doesn't get told do admin, (laughs) but at home we think, well, you just got to limp on and just do it and soldier on instead of uniquely using gifts. That's I'm already going like, Jenny, we need to check in. I've got, we're changes are coming to the Lesko household. (laughs) The beaches have saved the day. Yay. But what are maybe a a, a few other, uh, you know, things that have just really kind of maybe game changed, maybe even small, like, like getting the, the kids in the car, Chad, but that have maybe just been things like that you guys had to stumble on that have really bit, moved the needle forward for you. I'll, I'll talk about a small change. I will say when you talk about our parents and our foundation, I think that it, it, it doesn't equate for a perfect marriage. And we're both firstborn, so we were the guinea pig of two dads that were first-generation Christians. Mm. Uh, but I will say the one thing that having amazing parents in the ministry gave us was we have such trust for each other. And that has never been shaken, that has never been wavered, that has never been messed with. I'm just going to keep going all the adjectives. <laughs> uh, but I think that trust for one another really came from understanding and knowing each other's backgrounds yeah. and having that as a fundamental connection and um, trust for us is very strong. But I will say a, a small little thing that we've implemented, it's kind of quirky, but I love it. I just think that when you get into year 14, how, how many years have you guys been married? Uh, 18. 18. 18. I was like, we need more fun, more things that make us giggle and laugh and find kind of like innocence and joy in our home. And one thing that we do as of late is we try to dance more in our kitchen and we try to dance in front of our children. We try to dance as a family. And I just think that that small little change has brought a lot more visible joy, Mm. uh, even from our kids observing us. And you could be a terrible dancer or you could have your your one move. You could have your one move, but music and celebration. Yes. And um, it was so funny because at one of our conferences, were you going to say this? No, go ahead. Yeah. Uh, uh, An amazing singer, Naomi Rain, she... uh, It's like, I just kept feeling this word Sarasota as I was flying here. Like, I want to use this word Sarasota. And I looked it up and it it meant a season of dancing. Stop. To dance again. And I had already put that down as like, I get like really like specific little things that I want to change in our home. And I was like, I want to dance. I want to dance in front of the kids, you know, while they're eating dinner at the island. I want them to see a slow dance. I want them to see a silly dance. And so that's, that's like a recent 
fun one. I that is love yeah, that. really great. <laughs> also, love it. wonderful trivia on the meaning of Sarasota. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. When she said, I see Sarasota for you. And I was like, I just got back from Sarasota. I do not see Sarasota in the future, although I love But that it means a spirit of of dancing. Wow. And I love Florida, man. And she said, it's not going to be a season for you to dance alone, but it's, you're going to create people uh, space for people to dance around you. And I was like, oh, that's really special. So cool. I think when you when you ask this question, I think of a number of things that like I'm really thankful that we do. One, one of the things that Julie and I do a lot is we look at the calendar a lot. We, we, we really go to the calendar a lot. We look at, I call it the next 30, 60, 90 days. We just, we're always looking at what's in front of us because, you know, we want to be deliberate with our time. Yeah. Uh, who do we want to get a meal with? Who do we want to have to the house? Who do we want to, when is our date night? Um, when do we want to take a trip? What, what what trip is coming up that you know we're going to go do together? We just like looking at the calendar together. We communicate a lot via email. And the reason why we to do each that other. is because... Yes. And the reason why we do that is because (laughs) when we were, yeah, truly across the kitchen in the morning when it's too early to be talking yet. But when we were dating, I lived in a city called Puyallup and Julia's down in Portland area. And so we fell in love over email and we just kind of never stopped emailing. So if there's a to-do list or there's things that are coming up, there's five things I want to get. Like we just communicate really well over email. We're constantly talking But it's like we just get things done that way. Another thing that's really helped us, this is the last one, is that um, we watch the money and we look at our dollars and we look at where we're at. Today, literally this morning, we looked at all of our assets as far as like, Where's our 401k? Where's our college funds? Where we look at our money together. And even we did that today. Today's the, what are we on the third? Today's the third? Third. Yeah. Yep. But, but, but starting November 1, we're on a spending freeze right now. And we're on a spending freeze from November 1st to 15th. All you can buy is gas, groceries, and, and, and pay the utilities. And that is because in October is birthdays. Mm. Uh, there was, you know, just some extra expenses. And so we're going to catch up. And so I think, you know, one of the things that we try and do in our house is never have financial pressure, never have financial, you know, not, we're not spending more money than we, than we have. We're not spending money that we don't have yet. So we're always watching our accounts. We're always taking care of our, our money. I think I've watched in the last year and a half, two years, some of the nicest, godliest people I know come under financial pressure and I've watched them go sideways. Mm. What do they say? When you put someone in pressure, what's in gets revealed. Mm. And so that's just, pressure doesn't build character, it reveals character. Yeah. And I just don't want us to be, we're already under enough pressure with yeah. Georgia, church, leadership, all, all the stuff we talked about earlier. Yeah. Why would I add money? Wow. So wise. Money is like water. If you do not tell it where to go, it'll go wherever it wants. Mm. So we watch our dollars and our pennies. And we take care of it. And if we if it's not in alignment and not where we want it, we go on a freeze. And so I think that that's just little things that we do to try and create such peace in our house. So good. Extremely practical. So and I also wise. love too that you guys are leaving a trail of your relationship in your email records. You know, mm. verbal conversations. That's not you know the kids are going to be able to read those one day. Like, you know, we're on this big Julia child kick right now and. Paul wrote letters like constantly, her husband. And so there's a record that, that they were able to cobble together so much of their relationship and the funny things. Mm. So that's really beautiful that you guys have just have that. I mean, going back all the way. So sweet. Uh, that's who I was. That's who I was named after. No. Really? My, yeah. My mom used to watch her and yeah. She's fascinating. Mm-hmm. Fascinating. Have you guys watched much of her show? No, yeah. I have The French oh, yeah. chef. Yeah. There's a documentary called Julia that Jenny watched on an airplane, and we've become very, we we, we are very much obsessed with it. And, and then HBO did a multi-episode uh, show that came out in March of this year, all about Julia, called Julia. And you got to get to know your namesake a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, she. Yeah. She By the way, awesome. speaking of documentaries, real fast, have you watched the Marty Fish documentary about tennis? No. Mm. I need to. Okay. I want you to watch this one. Marty Fish. Marty Fish. Tennis Doc. I believe it is on Netflix. All right. Great. I watched it. I thought about you because I know you love tennis. Wow. I'm, that's all I'm going to that. say. That's all I'm going to say. 
is watch it and then let's talk. Okay. Mm. I, 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 That's your homework, I, babe. Bye. Gotta go. Um, no. <laughs> um, but those two things, send an email to your spouse today. Talk about finances more regularly. Don't let it be a once a month thing. Are you talking, how, how frequently would you guys have those check-ins then? They, uh, go ahead. The emails or the... Either one. The financial, financial. talks, all that. Uh, finances, it wouldn't, I would say at least, you know, like every other week, probably. I was going to say every That's other good. week, we wouldn't do it every, every week, yeah. but yeah, every other week we're looking at the money, talking about the money. I, I, I'm a little bit obsessive in terms of like, I just, I'm robotic as far as doing the same thing every day. So I, I kind of daily am in there, but we'll get together, you know, every other week or at least have a conversation about it. So but if I, but if I'm like, you know, Hey, can you organize the garage? That's got to go through the email because then it's not, emo it's emotionless. It's just matter of fact. Mm. He's going to hear that as a man without any tone behind it. That's so, so good. Like, those are the type of things where I'm like, we don't have got time to go in circles to say, what do you mean by that? Yeah. <laughs> so That's like, a hack though, Julia. That's that a is. hack. It There's is. no emotion to an email. And uh, so uh, yeah. you're going to choose the right media for the message. So good. That's it. That's, That's helpful. Oof. Good, Dang. good work. We're we've had church today, baby. Um, uh, now, now I know you know. You mentioned dancing, Chad. You were on a very big Peloton running kick. Is that still happening? You know what? I'm just about to get back into it. I I I've been off. I've been kind of you know uh, uh, not as diligent on the Peloton. We got into Orange Theory. I just this week scaled back my Peloton membership to only twice Orange Theory. A week, oh, sorry, Orange Theory to only twice a week, eight times a month because I'm going to get back in the Peloton. Mm. The, the, and specifically the Peloton treadmill. Treadmill. Because her sister and, and, and our brother-in-law are very into the Peloton right now and they inspired me. I needed my Peloton inspiration. Yeah, <laughs> no, it's true. Okay, and then what about together? Do you guys ever, I mean, do you guys both play pickleball? Well, no, we go to Orange Theory together. Yesterday, we were on the treadmill. To, you know, we're, do, we do the classes together. We love going to Orange Theory together. So that's a fun yeah. date, a, a, a date thing together. Oh, yeah, that's, yeah, yeah. yeah. Had, like on Friday's our day we off. We had leftover chili for lunch, and then we did Orange Theory. Let's just say that was, it was <laughs> very necessary to be next to your spouse and no one else. <laughs> that is so funny. Guys, guys, yeah. guys. I taught, I, yeah, I, I, I don't want to go No any one further. wants to sprint uphill and like kind of burp up like a chili bean. <laughs> yeah. It's, like a weird, yeah. it's a weird scenario. Yeah. I mean, we've never done Orange Theory, so mm -hmm. that would be an interesting uh, thing in general. Um, I, I think... Uh, we don't have Orange Theory. No, we don't have it here. It'll come into Montana in 2077. Yes. Let's go. Yeah. Let's go, OTF. Yeah. Um, what other creative dates, what, ways to keep kind of fun things together have you guys figured out? I mean, obviously, outside of the usual, you guys love restaurants, you love dancing, going out, seeing new places. How about some other, like, maybe, like, oh, wouldn't have thought of that as a date night thing? You know, I, I, I think for, for us, I, I just try to lean into her world, what she love. You know, and I think I think that's so. Marriage is is what it's leaning into each other. It's sacrificing for each other. Mm. She loves going out to eat. She loves good food. I like going to a restaurant. Julia is such a foodie and so good at ordering. I don't have to order a thing. So I'm I'm like, what do you want to get? Have to what? or allowed to? <laughs> yeah, I, yeah, and just like, what what do you want to order? So we we like doing that, but we like to do simple things. Like sometimes we'll just go down to the beach and walk the strand or. A lot of a lot a lot of our adventures actually are including the kids these days, yeah. and we don't see that as like as, you know, man, we need our own private time. I don't know. We've just kind of they just like take the scooters and go, so you can still have connective conversations. It's not like you're like bouncing a baby or like engaging a toddler. Like our kids are kind of running around or talking to themselves. So I feel like those conversations. We're kind of out of that time where it's like, we need a break from the kids. Yeah. And we're in that season where it's like, we want the kids to come yeah. and we can still like find fun things to do. And, yeah. and, it, and we're connecting. So it's, it, it feels like it's evolved from being like that traditional date night, sitting down, how you doing to more like activity, you know, on the go. Yeah. That's, that's love awesome. It. Love that. Okay. Chad, uh, that we have to talk about this book a little bit. And I do want to ask um, just origin story of the book. Why, why do you choose this topic? But I want to save that because first I want to ask while we're still in the marriage thing, what are some hacks to you guys praying together? Cause I know this is a whole book about prayer, but what has helped you guys to develop uh, your own prayer rhythms, you know, inside your marriage? 
Yeah, I mean, develop, developing, changing, evolving. I just think that that piece, the private devotion, the devotion together, has had so many changes throughout the last 14 Absolutely. years. Yeah. <laughs> um, I, I like make a joke. I'm like, it's impossible for us to have three days in a row of momentum because it's a kid gets sick, mm -hmm. something's wrong with Georgia. I mean, disruption is just part of our flow. Mm. Um, so I think it's like, I, I reference, like I have a good friend and she's amazing and, but she doesn't always come to church consistently, but when she comes, it's like, she is the same person with all the excitement and joy. Like she owns that place. I think like I approach prayer that way. Like I don't, uh, if I'm out of my flow or routine, like I get to just come in with that same excitement and fresh energy and joy and ownership, um, rather than like my head held low or guilt. I mean, Enneagram one, you know, if I, <laughs> that's you a go-to. Like, You're already there. You're totally. at shame completely. Yeah. Yep. Yes. yes, totally. I'm like, Oh gosh, you missed, like, don't be frustrated. Mm. Uh, well, I think you've opened, but, you open up Instagram and you see pastors and their wives, like we pray together seven times per day and we have a photographer yeah. there every time we do it. Interesting. <laughs> enough, um, and I, I was like, "That's just not our rhythm. That's not that's not, that's not us." And so I'm I'm happy to hear that we're not the only ones who who don't find it. Uh, after you turn the butter, you immediately go to your three hours prayer. Oh, time I wish together. I could churn butter. <laughs> yeah, I think I can churn butter better than I would pray with my spouse. No, no, yeah. but maybe. I, no, I think uh, honestly, what mm -hmm. has helped our prayer life the most as a married couple is praying with our kids yeah. and praying as a family. Mm -hmm. We've never been really that couple that's like, you know, like let's say hands on each other and pray. Like that's just kind of not been our our flow from the beginning. Maybe it's because we communicate best over email. We just never really <laughs> were that. I mean, we pray together for sure, and we yeah. pray, we you know, no, over we, one another. But it's not like a daily, everyday thing. Yeah. It's not like it's just yeah. It's not really the personality of our relationship. And maybe could just from we didn't do it from the beginning, so we we, we didn't really implement it that much. We also never saw our parents model that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, yeah. We, I don't have any memories of my parents praying together. Had to very be honest, individual um, devotional lives. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. That I, makes sense. I, I mean. You know, like it, this morning, we're getting the kids ready. There's worship music playing in the background. You know, I read the Bible this morning. We're praying over our kids before they go to school. You know, there's definitely a sense of prayer in our house, meals, you know, bedtime. I, we're really not that couple that's like constantly, you know, if there's a need, if there's a, a, a hurt, if there's a... A, a obstacle, if there's something that we're believing for, 100%. But yeah. just it's not really our our everyday habit. I, if you remember, we did try this early on in the marriage. We did. Uh -huh. I don't remember it. <laughs> and it resulted in sex quite a few times. <laughs> well, well, that's good. So maybe that's well, why we gave up on it. I it seems like you should there. start praying more often then. <laughs> I was going to say, I almost was that guy that made that joke when I lay hands. Like, yeah. I was just like, don't be that guy. Speaking in tongues, you know, they're both, yeah. they're, just, they're there. Yeah. Well, it's gotcha. like, bro, so don't be that guy. We don't, we don't need but you Julia, in the gutter. But if know. Julia's saying that joke, it's so in bounds. Yeah. No, it's true. <laughs> it's, it's absolutely appropriate. All right. So tell us about about the book, uh, Worried About Everything Because I Pray About Nothing. Great title. Uh, it's a beautiful cover. Yes. It's a beautiful title. Um, and I, I've heard a lot of uh, the you know content as you've been preaching about it and talking about it, and it's awesome. You know, I, I, I'll say this uh, to you because you are a prolific author. I'm believing for this book to have a slow year. And when I sl say slow year, I re am referring to a Dr. Henry Cloud slow year. Recently, I was with Dr. Cloud and we were talking about boundaries. And he said, well, you know, the book before boundaries was, I can't remember the name of the title. And that really led me to write boundaries. And I said, wow, how did, how did that book do? The one before boundaries, because you know boundaries is sold. You it's know, one of the. It's always the top of every chart. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's like and 87 says, of them. It's like boundaries for your kindergarten. For kids, yeah, you know, yeah, for yeah, exactly. Flying a kite. Yeah. Boundaries for your dog. Yeah, exactly. Smart. So I said, well, how, how did that book do before boundaries? And he goes, ah, oh, you know, it started off slow, slow, slow first year, and, and I go, what, what, what would that be? He goes, I think first year, 75,000. I said, Dr. Cloud, take your hands, lay on, yeah. lay them on my head. Give me, God, give us a slow give year this slow. year. 
yeah. yeah. I'm just declaring in Jesus' name yeah. slowness. Yeah. <laughs> yes, amen. Um, but you know, I, I I think first of all, you 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 write out of what you're going through. Right. You write first of all what God's talking to you about, what God's dealing with you about. So um prayer, you know, I wrote this really out of the pandemic. You know, we're really coming out of political unrest and racial tension and a health crisis and a financial crisis and never need to pray, pray more. And God started to talk to me really about the subject of prayer even before, before COVID. I was in Colombia and I was preaching at this church called Supresencia. And um, long story short, I was just so moved by what I was seeing there. I was f- blown away. And I asked the pastor, why, why do you think you're experiencing this here in Colombia and we're not seeing things like this in America? And he said, well, I think the reason why God is moving in our church this way is because every Tuesday and Thursday from 6 a.m. to 7 a.m., there's thousands of people that come to the church to pray yeah. before they go to work. And God started reminding me personally about all the times I really felt like I was in a revival type flow in ministry or when God was doing crazy things, so to speak, it was all be- always because I was praying. And I'm a stickler on Bible reading. I, I, I'm kind of legalistic about it. I love to read the Bible in the morning. Mm. But God in that time was reminding me, I haven't just called you to study scripture. I've actually called you to pray as well. Mm. And then I started to think about, well, why don't I pray? and Why don't others pray? So it was all kind of birthed out of that going like, Oh yeah, I think people aren't praying because they think it's hard or they think it's something that it's not. And so I really wanted to debunk those myths. And that's kind of why I wrote the book. That's beautiful. So good. Um, maybe you could share a couple hacks that have helped you in your prayer life because I, I relate to that. I think for me, reading the Bible is a lot easier than praying. But if you think about like that's like a one-sided conversation, which is weird. You know, if mm-hmm. someone's there with you you're going to talk back to them and you're going to respond to them. And, you know, I would be so sad if my kids only, you know, listened to me, but never said anything, you know, to think about it like a parent. Right. And and I always think like, you know, where would we be the four of us without prayer? Yeah. I mean, you just think about that. Where would our life, we would be thrown. Yes. We would not be doing, Hey, it's the Let's Go's podcast without question. And luckily, thankfully, we were taught how to pray. I think the best way to teach someone how to pray is to do it with them. Mm-hmm. And so when you're praying with the church, they're learning how to pray. They're, you're modeling it. Right. Our kids are learning how to pray through us praying with them. And so I think one of the one of the greatest hacks, I think, out of the whole book that I really wanted to highlight was we don't worship prayer. I'm not here to elevate and make much of prayer. Prayer is just a vehicle. Yeah. Prayer, like, that'd be like worshiping my Uber driver. Mm. My Uber driver just gets me from where I am to where I need to be. And so I think prayer is just a vehicle. It gets me from where I am to the presence of God. And it's really the presence of God or connecting with God that changes everything. That's right. And so I think I get passionate about people learning how to do that because if you connect with God, that's where all the perspective comes. That's where all the peace comes. That's where all the purpose comes. That's where I get my premise restored. All of it happens in the presence of God. So I get really passionate about people praying because I think, you know, you could literally go from anxiety to peace that fast. Mm. You know, and, 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 you know, it's not that it's like this quick hit, but it's like when I start talking to God, the anxiety I feel, it's not that anxiety goes away. It's that I'm reminded I don't have to be overwhelmed by stress yes. or overwhelmed by anxiety. God gives me the power to go through that feeling. Brilliant. So good, Chad. I love how in the book you talk about it. It's a, it's a very empowering book because it's not a big guilt trip. And I love that you're saying we're not elevating prayer for prayer's sake. And I think you use the line, it's not your length that gives your prayer strength in the book. And I just thought that was, that captures it because that's it. God's not impressed by verbosity, you know, verbosity, and he's not wanting some big speech. He wants just time with you. And so prayer is a vehicle, it's a tool. And I think even just the impact of marriage, like I have such an easier time being kind and gentle to Jenny if I'm praying for her. Mm. And that bringing her to the throne, it, it, it keeps me from being petty. It keeps me from, you know, being selfish and in the flesh to her. And, and that's totally. just such a game changer for marriage. 
Huge. Yeah. How can you stay at, how can you stay mad at someone you're praying for? Yeah. So I, I think one of my other favorite thoughts in the book is dangerous prayers. And this thought of like, could you imagine how dangerous it is to tell God that your life is his wow. and he can do whatever he wants with you? Mm. <laughs> yeah. Wow. Absolutely. What a yeah. dangerous, I mean, guys, if we're really going to have fun in life, get into the dangerous stuff. Mm. Like a man with a savior is willing to take a risk. Mm. Come on. And I think that there's something powerful about just going like, my time is yours. Mm. My money is yours. My talent that you gave me, I give it back to you. That's why Jesus, when he teaches us the Lord's Prayer, he doesn't say, you have to say these prayers verbatim every time you pray. He just goes, this is good language. You know, this is good guardrails. Yeah. You should pray this way. Your kingdom come. Mm. Your will be done. That's a dangerous prayer to pray. Yeah. Because you're saying it's not about what I want. It's not about what I think should happen. It's not about my agenda. I want your stuff to be accomplished on earth and in my life. So I get excited about people learning the, the power and the potential that lies in a prayer life. So good. Come well, thank on. you, Chad, for writing this thank and you. all your other books. Yeah. And um, thank you for the photo. I, yeah, thank you for the photo. <laughs> <laughs> I know where this is going. Above <laughs> our bed, it's right a, there. It's oh, worth, my God. I just want to, so I can pray for you. It's the stash. <laughs> it's fine. guys. Um, Chad, uh, Oh, what about yeah. the podcast, man? Leadership Lean In. That has taken on a life of its mm. own. It really has. It's so much fun. I was just telling the team yesterday, I'm just so excited about it. I don't know if you guys are having fun doing this. I think what you guys are doing is such a cool, amazing play. I love your podcast. I love where I'm challenged with your podcast is you guys do such a good job of bringing on guests. Mm. You guys are so good at that. And um, I, so I'm, I'm trying to bring on more guests this next year. I'm just, I, I love the idea of talking about the subject of leadership. It's just one of my favorite subjects in the, the whole world. And so I love learning about it and, and, and trying to get a little bit better. Can you, and, and everyone who hasn't, has to go back and listen to some of your favorites, um, can you think of, and it doesn't have to be episode or it doesn't have to even be, you know, big thing, but are there a few concepts maybe that, that have been communicated on the podcast or in on, on leadership in general lately that have been really for you like fresh thoughts and maybe needle movers in your in your life that you can extract hmm. totally you know one one of them is I just did a podcast called Advice to Young Leaders. And a thing that we keep going through in leadership is this idea of no ego amigo and the idea of humility, mm. servant leadership. And I think that one of the advice that we give to young leaders in, the, in this podcast and something that I'm trying to apply constantly is just the destructive nature of the spirit of pride. Yes. And we all want to be you know, think about most leaders. They want the corner office. They want the promotion. They want the power. They want the proximity. There's such a lust and thirst for control in all of us when it comes to leadership. And I think that we're trying so hard to combat that spirit and go low. You know, our, our hero, the four of us, one of our heroes is Louis Giglio. We just got to acknowledge that to the four of us. Yes. This that it gets, yeah. you know, doesn't get much bigger than that guy in our world. He's on Mount Rushmore for sure. Yeah, it, yeah it's just insane. <laughs> and, and, and twice in the last maybe 12 months, I maybe extended to 16 months, he has grabbed me and said this phrase to me, go low. Mm. And the first time he did it, I was really inspired. The second time he did it, I was like, does he see something in me that's wrong? <laughs> no, honestly. <laughs> yeah, you're worried. Am I okay? <laughs> Am I okay? <laughs> Am I in known? Am I in known sin or unknown sin? Yes. What does he know? What's God telling him? <laughs> does he not like the Dodgers or hoodies? Yeah. Like, what am I doing wrong? <laughs> and, and, and those words are 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 hauntingly encouraging. Yeah. Go low, man. Go low. Go low. This world needs leaders that are going low. It's yes. a theme that keeps coming up on the podcast because it's a theme. Again, what do you what do you talk out of the abundance of the heart? So what in my heart is being challenged is having the ability to go, dude. You're not the big deal. See, in that and thought you, though, no ego, amigo. That's what I'm here for, man. That's and, and seriously. By, and, and, and by the way, shout out to Peloton instructor Jess Sims. Woo! Because that's what she says every time I take her class on Peloton. 
when she's getting us going into the hard stuff, she says, hey, do it. No ego, amigo. <laughs> and when I heard it the first time, I said, let me write it down. Yes. I'm using it forever. Honestly. Yes. Yes. Honestly. That is so good. Well, that's great. Julia, um, when is the world going to get a Julia of each book? I know I ask you this every hey. time. I'm always, I'm because you're so fun and smart yes. and sassy. I'm telling you, and and in your gift of hospitality, yes. uh, we oh, want to dance in your kitchen. You. Yes. Uh, yes, but uh, please, anytime the door is open. We're going to show up at Super Bowl Sunday again. That was <laughs> please, one of my best no. memories of your of your hosting. Yes. that was so fun. Bounce house oh. in the driveway. Yeah, Outrageous. Chili. Mm, that I was good. It. Chili. I love a bounce house. We just um, talked about this yesterday. We did. We did. I I actually have presented a few book ideas. They've gotten through publishers and editors, and I've gotten some amazing feedback, and I've gotten some funny feedback. <laughs> uh, but yeah, I th yeah, I think I still I still have some thoughts that I'm working through mm. right now, and some directions, but soon, maybe. It's going to happen. Potentially. hundred percent. We believe it's, it. <laughs> it's a win, not an F for sure. The right. I mean, I think what happened was the, the first, the first go around was when I was a little bit more in the fire with the kids. And so it was, it was kind of through the lenses of, um, Little laugh, babies. laughing through life's messes. Right. But it was, it was a book filled with humor and it included me, you know, using the restroom in my pants on the way to church when I had to get on the stage. It had all of the messy details. <laughs> there. She kind of yeah. went the, uh, what was the Tina Fey book? Um, oh, uh, Bossy Pants. No. It, it was kind of the Christian Bossy Pants. Yeah. Exactly, Bossy it. Pants. Yes. I Jenny's favorite it. is Amy Poehler's. Have you read hers? Oh, no, yeah. but I would so love good. that. So I, those good. girls, those two girls right there are just comedic genius. When yes. Jenny was listening to Amy Poehler's audio I was audiobook, listening to it because she I, reads it. I knew whenever she was listening to it because we, she would just be inappropriately laughing in public <laughs> <laughs> for no reason. I'm like, it's Amy Poehler again. On a plane. On a plane. plane. Just oh. like, Not just like, in life. Like, like we're almost wetting her pants laughing so hard Dude. listening to this Dude. book. Dude, they're so funny. But I feel oh, like, I Julia, that. that's why I keep hounding you about this yeah. because oh, I just know, I, I just know no, you have you have hard pressed diamonds yes. that have come from the yes. coal, yeah. and and the wisdom and the pain and 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 tips and 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 the the laughter and even just hospitality tips. I mean, you yeah. are so good oh. at that, and your sense of style. And yeah. so, thank you. Not to go on, but so keep. Kind. Let me this just. Is my, this is this is I my favorite it. part of the pod, by the way. You I, are, my yeah. Part. Maybe you are the nudge that is inching me to the. He'll continue to. to the, will, he's a to good the nudge. Final step. The final I'll, step. I'll, it'll be yeah. like the egg. You have to get all the way across the football field. You know, with your nose, yeah. you just keep pushing it all the way down. <laughs> um, <laughs> how about anything you guys are reading right now that you love? Uh, you already mentioned, of course, the documentary uh, Marty Fish, which is in my queue as we speak. But anything else you guys are reading that's just like, wow, this has been amazing, or watching? I'm going through uh, two right now, and I'm rereading Deep and Wide, and uh, by Andy Stanley, and I'm mm. loving it. And then I am going through uh, the coddling of the American mind, oh, which is yeah. also a parenting book. Very good. Okay. What about you? So Julia? those are kind of the two I'm working through. So good. Uh, the last book we did together on audio was Green Light with mm. Matthew McConaughey. Oh, stupendous. That was a that was when our, he rigged his van up to where he could pee while driving without stopping. I was like, brilliant! I've been wanting this for years. <laughs> yes. Why did I love the? Why fact would that, people read that when you could listen? Yeah, to him? yeah. And yeah, why, yeah. why did I love the fact that he lived with the Dooleys in Australia? I mean, that also. Blessed <laughs> oh yeah, <laughs> dude, so, those people were weirdos. That was very weird, bizarre. Very bizarre. That was a that was a recent fun favorite. Phenomenal. I, um, I started to reread because uh, <laughs> because I kept having to put the book down the first time because I didn't want to listen to it. So I'm rereading uh, Mark Comer's The Ruthless Elimination of Hurry oh. because I don't want anyone to tell me to slow down. Um, I'm the worst at yeah. slowing down. <laughs> so uh, I'm retrying to implement that because I could notice that my kids uh, were starting to feel my rush so that's <laughs> that <laughs> have you guys ever done audiobooks with the kids in the car at all 
A little bit, yeah. I I think we're also tapping into like the kids' podcasts. Yes. Um, I think that's. So Are there any fun. recommended ones? Any good ones there? We've never done the podcast with kids. Mm-mm. Oh really? Like there's like the PBS. The one that I put in, the, I just um, always put in Bible stories, and then oh. I click on different podcasts. I haven't necessarily. By the way, you know our boys love your book. Oh, that's awesome. Aww. They, they love yeah. that book. Two nights ago, Maverick was asking for it. I was looking high and low through our library. He was insistent. He had to read an alternative inferior uh, Bible book. We'll have to send him another night. copy. So but sweet. The, our boys love that book. Well, thank you for saying that. That's That means a lot. We found audiobooks to be so helpful. Like We just finished the, the Young Readers edition of Unbroken, which is Louis wow. Zamperini's story. He was, he's a Torrance guy. He, uh, uh, was, he was, he ran in the Olympics, then got, uh, shot down in an airplane, ended up in a raft for two months in the Pacific, ended up as a POW in the Japanese camps and then got saved at a Billy Graham crusade in Los Angeles and then wow. forgave his captors and lived to be like 96 skateboarded. But he's, it's the, so much of the story happens in and around Los Angeles. You guys yeah, would find that fascinating, that oh, I mean, Bar- but Boys the kids that. ate it up. And just oh, punching wow. a shark in the nose, and oh, you know, getting yes. shot with machine guns. So like, we 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 <laughs> found audiobooks on in the car, and you only you, the rule is you can only listen to it if we're all in the car, and that's been wow. a lot I love of fun. That, that is okay, so cool. We're, we're trying that. Yeah, that yeah. We're, we're gonna steal that. We do that a lot play. of loud music right now. <laughs> <laughs> turn, right now, yeah, turn yeah, it up. Uh, turn it up. Drown them right, out. Right right now <laughs> on the way to school, when we pull out the driveway, it's "Bless Me" that Maverick City song. Have you heard that one? "Bless Me." Mm-hmm. No. It's got like a it's got a swinging beat oh, to it. Here we go. Here we go. So we go right into "Bless, bless Me." Bless Me. Da 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 da. Bless me. It's like it's got that cadence. Yeah. Uh, but it's got great energy. So our boys go from right from that into Book of Revelation. Da, da, da. <laughs> they say, hunger no more. Neither shall they. Th- preach, preach up. We go then, right into Do You Want a Revolution? And then I'm coming in. That's hot. our car ride. That is amazing. I want to be a, I want to be a beach child. When I die, <laughs> if if God would allow me, I want to come back as a beach child. Wow, there's so much. Well, well, did we'll I just shift my him. theology to reincarnation you at did. the end of the podcast? You that's how much him. that's how much I love you. <laughs> Full circle. Uh, you guys, yeah. thank you for your time. Thank, thank you oh, for we being who you are. Love you guys so much. We love encourage you. everyone out there to get worried about everything because I pray about nothing yes. by the one and only Chad Veach. Uh, Zoe Church is where you can find them if you find yourself in Los Angeles mm. or yes. have access to the internet uh, where <laughs> <laughs> where all the good things take place. Congrats on the new building. Yeah. Uh, oh, thanks, guys. We love you guys and are grateful for your love friendship. You. Love oh, you so love much. You. Hope to see you, you soon. Yes. Thank you so much for listening. And be sure to swing by levilusco.com to see what's going on in our world and make sure to subscribe so you don't miss a single episode. In the meantime, we would love to connect with you on social media. Jenny and Levi Lusco, out.